It's been almost a year since Netflix set foot to take over the world with its video streaming offers. But is it making the same headway in Asia? We speak to its Chief Communications Officer Jonathan Freeland to see how receptive the Asian markets have been. Hi John, uh, thank you for joining us today. It has been almost a year that Netflix has set foot in this region. How has it been so far? It's been an incredible journey, both really great and really hard. Um, what we're trying to do is build a global inter uh, internet TV network that has an amazing amount of content uh, for your mom, for you, for your kids, that's uh, very affordable, that works really well, that's easy to use, and that uh, pleases you. And, uh, you know, every time we enter into new markets, we always have a lot to learn and we're learning a lot in Malaysia. So we've been talking a lot on cutting the cord, especially in the Western countries. People have been distancing themselves from watching the traditional TV, uh, TV providers. So uh, do you see the same similar trend in this region? The reason why people cut the cord in the United States is because they've been sold these incredibly expensive packages of channels they don't watch. So the problem's been is that the cable and satellite companies have you know, loaded people with a bunch of stuff they don't need and charged them a ton of money for it and then they won't let them leave. So people don't like that. People don't like to pay for stuff they don't enjoy. So what we've done is offer a very affordable alternative that is flexible, that's portable, that you can cancel any time. In the rest of the world, cable is still growing, but what we're seeing is more and more mobile usage of Netflix, which implies that people are shifting to streaming faster here than they did in other parts of the world and that ultimately that's going to be um, probably the way most young people watch TV. So Netflix has been rolling out incredible shows, um, you have been producing your own films as well mm -hmm. but um, for an audience that really like to watch a lot of their local contents like um, Malay-based Malay -based films or Chinese or even Tamil, mm -hmm. how are you going to compete with the local uh, TV providers. We are providing like an unprecedented level of access to really high quality storytelling from around the world. I mean, we are never going to be the best at local programming compared to local providers, but what we try to do is bring great stories for all ages and tastes from all over the world and provide it to people at what we think is a reasonable price. Mm -hmm. And hopefully we do a good job and they like it and they stay with us. We're looking for opportunities always. We're working with filmmakers and showrunners as they they call people who make television shows from many, many different countries. We talked about uh, Hook in Singapore and also iFlix in Malaysia. They provide um, packages which is so much more cheaper than Netflix. What do you think that Malaysians would actually subscribe to Netflix? A lot of entrants are coming in and offering different types of services and everywhere in the world we see it, not just in Malaysia. In Latin America we compete with Claro Video, with HBO. In the United States we compete with Amazon and Hulu. In Europe we compete with Canal Plus, we compete with all these different providers. In India with Eros, I mean there, there are a lot of them and that's great because what it means is that consumers get more opportunity, they get more choice, they have all these options of what to look at. We're never going to be like a very price sensitive service because we're making amazing content and that's expensive, right? Mm -hmm. We're making big, fantastic television shows and movies and that costs a lot of money. And what we try and do is keep the price very affordable relative to the value we provide. So Netflix has been present in 190 countries. Yeah. How do you actually choose which content to be played in which country? In our case, what we try and do is make our own content because we cannot often get global rights to other shows. So we do that very selectively. We're buying certain shows globally that we can access to. But in other cases, that's why we went into making our own programming. So in most of the world, we have a very similar catalog. And what we're trying to do is we learn more about people's tastes in every country is to shape the catalog so that it provides more of the local things they want but that'll be maybe 20 30 percent and the rest will be global you have huge plans next year and you're going to roll out new episodes for crown uh, how do you manage that because it's very expensive for you to 
stream videos, buying license at the same time, and also produce um, films at the same time. Yeah. So how do you actually manage the cost? We set the budget for what we're spending on content against what our projections for growth are. And it's our job to grow the margin of the company so that it's more and more profitable, and then we cut the losses internationally that we've invested in growing so quickly in the United, you know, in Asia and Africa and Middle East. And so the goal is is to continue to provide um, a high amount of excitement and joy for people, and that they continue signing up and they stay with us. How do you choose between making your own movies and also working with filmmakers to create? to make great movies. We've been doing is we've been trying to look to find projects with, um, you know, that are going to be uh, good for our viewers. So we have that. We have movies coming next year with Brad Pitt, with Will Smith, movie directed by Angelina Jolie. We have this amazing movie called Okja, made by the great Korean filmmaker Bong Joon-ho, who made Snowpiercer and The Host. And, you know, we're trying to get more and more movies that we think are people are going to love.